derivative function times the derivative inside. So you tell me, does any of this change? We'll take the derivative of cosine x to the fourth. What's the derivative of cosine x to the fourth? Let's think about that. It says you take the derivative of, it says derivative of your overlying function. Okay, that's the, that's the thing that you're composing into. So derivative of cosine, you need to take that first. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine. Okay, so I'm going to put that in a bracket because it's negative. Negative sine. Hey, negative sine of what? Is it still x to the fourth or 4x cubed? Good, because chain rule says you do this, but you'll leave this piece alone for just a second. You leave that alone. In order to find the derivative of this, you multiply by that. So we're starting to build these rules on top of each other, and you really got to be good at what rule comes first. If you are, then you follow the DDX, and it's just fine. But you gotta, you got to find that first rule. Once you do that, we said, okay, this probably should be written like this. This says general power rule. You bring it down. You leave it alone. You multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's where we're getting that from. You okay with that? After that, calculus done. Just, just keep on writing. Keep on writing. This DDX says take the derivative of this thing. Now, this is a chain rule. Chain rule says I take the derivative of cosine. Got it? but I leave the inside alone, just like you left the inside alone here. I leave the inside alone. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's where that's coming from. We're just going to feel all right with that so far. Good, all right. We're almost done. We have only have one little teeny derivative to take. What is it? Yeah, you know what? Every time you do a step, it makes it easier. Sometimes. <laughs> but every time you use a rule, it breaks down into little pieces. For you. Times, what is that? Four. 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 Cool. Negative. Or sorry, 2 cosine x to the 4th times negative sine x to the 4th times 4x cubed. <coughs> Just make it maybe a little prettier up here. A little prettier would mean you have a negative, you've got a 4x cubed, and you have a 2. They're all being multiplied together. You see the multiplication? Take that stuff together. So this will be 8 negative. Negative 8 x to the 3rd, then the cosine or the sine, and then the sine. And that's how I'd like to see your problem. After this, it's, it's just algebra. It's just putting a couple things together. You have 2 times negative 1 times 4. That's your coefficient. That's negative 8. The x to the third, we typically like to bring that up front. Can you follow that? Yes, no. If yes, great. If not, do you have a question about it? You guys over here? Are we good? My middle guys? Are you good? People at home? Just kidding. Can't see you. Uh, you guys on the left? What if I could see you? They'd freak you out, wouldn't they? People in the world. Anyway. It doesn't matter which order the sign the cosine go in. No, that doesn't matter. No. It, this is technically right. right. This is it. So no matter how you, because multiplication is commutative, associative, it doesn't matter how you group it, how you put in order, we typically just write numbers and single variables first, and then sines and cosines. That's just how we do it. Can we move on? Are you ready to move on? To one similar. Is there a choice? I guess you could just leave. <laughs> You're going to stay, no. No choice. Okay, okay. 
This is actually kind of a more friendly problem. A little bit. Do you see why it's a more friendly of a problem? <clears throat> if I had done this, would it be a friendly problem? No, it would be your enemy. If I did that, what would you do first? A chain rule? They're both chain rules. But a chain rule or a general power rule? General general power. That would be just very similar to that problem. You would have to bring down the four, all of this to the third power derivative of the entire inside thing. Do you see it? Without the power, without the power, what are we talking about here? That's the chain rule. Do you see the... If you can cover something up and you still have a function, that's typically a chain rule. So we still have a chain rule right here. It's not a product rule. That's not a product. It's tangent of something. That's a chain rule. It's composition. Well, let's do that. What's, how's a chain rule work? What should we do first, please? Wait, do what now? Okay, cool. So leave this alone. Take the derivative of that thing. So this says, I'm going to have, oh, tan. What's tan? Very good. Make some flashcards. Know those derivatives. Secant squared. Does the inside change for us right now? No. Okay. Then? No. No. Multiply the inside. Can you tell me what the inside is here? Is it tan of this or just this? Just, just that part. This is just a chain rule. It says derivative of tan is secant squared, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's what the chain rule says to do in English. Got it. Secant squared, cool. Inside doesn't change, derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule at work. Not too bad. What are we going to do? Just follow the DDX. This is basically done. You're going to get a secant squared. But where people often forget to, what people often forget to do is this piece of it. They really often forget to do the chain rule. They'll do this for me, but they'll forget this part. I can't have you forget that part. That's a big part. That's a really big part. Or they will do secant squared, and then they'll take the derivative and just mash it together. So if you're giving me this, Well, that's, that's not even nearly right. You've changed the angle, you've, you've messed that problem up, all right? That's not what we're talking about. You can't just take derivative of this and derivative of that. This is definitely a chain rule because it is a composition. See the difference there? Okay. So for us, we go, no, 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 not that. This is, what is it? Oh, yeah, I just wrote it. <laughs> Another question, can I distribute that? Yeah. Yeah. Why can't you? Why can't you? That's a tangent. What is that? It's an angle. That's an angle. It's actually an angle that's related to oh, this. Oh, no, no, not this. I, I mean this. I thought you meant no, distribute distribute these the two. Whole thing. Okay. Can you distribute these two? No. Negatory. No, no, no. <clears throat> this, that's not an angle. This is attached to that secant squared. Okay, that's part of it. You can't change the angle. You can't change the angle. Uh, what we can do is move this to the front so that we, we don't distribute it. Um, you probably wouldn't want to take this thing in and you take the whole thing. You wouldn't want to do that. Okay, it's already factored for you nicely. Don't do that. Just leave it as 6x minus 2 secant squared 3x squared minus 2x. Tell me one huge thing I'm going to mark you off on. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Still okay? Yes. All right. Ready to keep going? Couldn't we also put the C in the parentheses? Like that? Yeah. One parentheses, right? Yeah, like that. <laughs> like that? Yeah. You could. It would be irrelevant, but you could. And just keep it easier to keep it in. Okay. See, now we're having fun. <laughs> sort of. No. You know what? I'll be no, I'm not gonna be nice. Um there. Great way to say things. I was just gonna give you an X, but I want you to see what happens. So 
this will be a little bit more difficult. Trust me, you want the more difficult ones now. That way your homework seems easier. If I just give you all the easy ones now, your homework should seem like a bear. So you want to do that. Okay, I'm lost. What do I do? Why, why would you say a general power rule? Okay. So chain, chain rule, general power rule, same thing, but we're going to say general power rule when we have the exponent so we can classify this a little bit better in our heads, okay? So if I say chain rule right now, me, I'm looking here. I'm looking there. So this, I'm going to call that a general power rule for this class. Okie dokie. Do you see the general power rule at work? See how it covers the whole entire expression? So perhaps write it this way. Because we know in order to take these derivatives, we've got to have exponents. <clears throat> so far, so good? Am I? Oh, I am. Shoot. Better? Yeah. Much more better. Okay, tell me what to do. Come on, you guys should be rolling with this stuff at this point. This should be like, okay, well, we're getting there. Not perfect, but we're getting there. What do we do? Good. Because this is general power rule, right? General power rule says bring it down. Write whatever's on the inside. Notice how we're not changing that. The inside does not change for our chain rule, which also includes a general power rule. Uh, do I still have an exponent? Or do I just get get rid of that exponent? Do I still have an exponent here? Yes. Don't forget about that exponent, man. Oh my gosh. If you just move down the one half and forget that, that's a big deal because you've eliminated a square root on the denominator there. So this this really needs that negative one half. Do you see where the negative one half is coming from? Yes. Can not you have you do? You feel okay with it? Now what do I do? Multiply by the Okay. Times derivative. Take that to work a Yeah, take the derivative of the inside. Take the derivative inside. So general power rule says bring it down, subtract one, just like you normally would with any power rule. Only now you have to multiply by the derivative of whatever you covered up, whatever you ignored for a second. In this case, it's the entire expression. So notice how before you start taking all these derivatives, you have the same thing twice. Do you see that? Same thing twice. And then you, I'm losing some of you. You with me? Mm -hmm. Then you take the derivative of that little piece. This, calculus done. Just hang on to it for a while. Now let's look at the derivative of this nasty junk here. What is the derivative of this thing? Can you take it a derivative piece by piece? Is it okay when I'm adding and subtracting? Yeah. Do I need a special rule to take the derivative of x cubed? No. Not at all. I can just do what's the derivative of x cubed? Yes. Beautiful. So don't outthink these problems. The only time you need special rules is when you have a quotient, a product, or a chain rule. That's it. So when you get this little piece, this should be a problem within a problem. Now you look at this, you go, how do I take the derivative of x cubed? No problem. It's being added. Remember, derivatives are separable by addition and subtraction. That's okay. So I just take this and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do 3x squared. Not a problem. That's fine. Can I take the derivative of cosecant x cubed? Can I take it directly, or do I need a special rule for it? Do you see?